Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Gay From Scratch, hopefully sounding like myself again, and today we are going to be checking out Sinfig, Seinfig, one of those two, probably Seinfig, but I actually like Sinfig better. Anyways, it's an open source uh, 2D animation package, and it's not alone in this space by any means. Now that OpenTunes is out there, there are quite a few options here. There's uh, Sinfig, there's OpenTunes, uh, there's Pencil 2D, there is Krita now has animation support, and uh, Blender Grease Pencil actually is increasingly getting more powerful. So you have a lot of options in this 2D animation space, so let's see what sets Sinfig apart. Now do keep in mind, this is not something I do on a daily basis. It's something I played around with, and I am by no means an expert on this subject. So if this looks interesting to you, be sure to dive in and get more details yourself. This is more just a, hey, did you know this project exists? Check it out kind of post. So without further ado, let's jump in and learn a bit more. Now, first off, a brand new version of Seinfig or Seinfig uh, was just released uh, two days ago, 1.3.7. As you saw, I covered it up on Game From Scratch. So it very much is a project under active development. If you're interested in grabbing it, it is available at www.seinfig or sinfig.org, S-Y-N-F-I-G.org. I will, of course, throw that link down below. Um, and you just go ahead, hit the download page, hit the download button. Uh, you have the option of saying how much you wish to pay for it, which also includes the option of zero. Click I want this, fill in an email address. I don't care if it's your own or not. If you want updates, obviously put one in. If you don't, send some more email to Bob Dole. And then hit get. And this will download the file. It's about 100 megs in size. Um, and once again, this is an open source project. It's available on GitHub. I will throw the GitHub link in the comments down below as well. Um, it's a GPL based project. GPL license is very restrictive. Basically, it means if you derive from the source code of this source code, you must keep your own source code available publicly and under the GPL license. Now that is a very abridged version of the license. Just know if you're working with the source code on this, you're basically keeping your source code GPL as well, and you must make it available. Now for most people just using the application, you don't give a damn. The source code license does not put any limitations on what you can do with Seinfig or Synfig. Uh, you don't have to share your work or anything like that. This just applies to the source code itself. All right, there's the details out of the way. Let's jump in. This is Seinfig Studio. Um, it's working right now really great on a straight 1080p display. Do worry, do be warned anyways that on a 4K display, there can be some high DPI issues, unfortunately. Can't wait till we live in a world where that is no longer an issue. Uh, here is your editing interface. You've got various different tools you can do for drawing and creating your scenes. Uh, so basically, there's a couple things going on here. There's It's for uh, creating scenes and compositing scenes and doing animations. Plus, there is a version control system built in underneath all of that. Uh, let's go ahead and open up one of their example projects. You can download this guy just by basically searching for um, Seinfig examples. This is the werewolf example that I'm using for this particular case. Ooh, that wasn't good. Hmm. Be right back. All right, so we just had a bit of a crash there. Actually, this first crash I've actually experienced. So I haven't found this software to be unstable, but I guess that's part of doing demos. Uh, you know, it, it increases the probability of crashyhood by 300%, I think. So again, generally I find the application pretty stable. That was a bit of an anomaly, but as you see, some crashes do occur. Um, here is a scene opened up. You do most of your work in this window, both your drawing and your animating. Uh, you see here, I can use the middle mouse button to scroll it up and down. I can hold down left and pan in any direction, and I can hold control and wheel button and zoom like so. So things are a little bit off. I don't know why it's being a little choppy on me too. So I don't know if it's just not flying well when my video capture is going. Because uh, normally it's much smoother than this too. But anyways, you can see basically here is your primary editing window. And you see down here we're built into different layers. Everything you do on screen is a layer or a child of a layer or a child of a set. So you can see here um, in, in our graphic here, uh, I'll turn off the blur. And that'll turn off the blur effect for the entire scene. Or I'll turn off the background image and you'll see we just have our wolf in the foreground. On the topic of the wolf, we can zoom in on it and you'll see, again, there is another blur being attached to it. Um, and we can zoom in. So there's the head. The head is composed of the face. The face is composed of details, eyes, muzzle, and eyebrows. And details, in turn, are composed of a bunch of strokes like that. And each value that we select over here, or each layer, in turn, has a bunch of properties over here. So the most common one you'll see here, for example, is the vertices. And these are a bunch of keyframes that have been set over time for animating said vertices. So if you look down here, here is our timeline for our view. 
and we can use this to jump between keyframes. So right now we're on keyframe zero F. So I'm gonna jump to the first keyframe and you'll jump forward to here and actually do anything. Next keyframe is obviously quite a bit different. Next keyframe. So you can jump through your various different keyframes in your animation like so. And it will do the interpolation between those keyframes and that is where your animation comes from. So it, create, it saves you from having to do a lot of like in betweening. Um, and that is a huge time saver and why people use computers for animations these days. Now, of course, you can also use this canvas for doing your drawings, etc. So let's use a more streamlined, straightforward example. This is a very uh, simple, created project from scratch. I'll zoom this guy down and in. And what I'm going to just do is come up here, use the Bezier line tool. And then create that loop the spline. So I'll close it and it becomes a solid shape. So go into the move mode and there you see uh, we can now, I'll do a control A, and we can now move it around like so in the scene. So this is um, pretty much the basics of drawing. You, you use a bunch of things together. You'll notice down here it created an outline and a region. So the, in, the inside and the outside are separate. So if I don't select it, you'll see there's the outer drawing like so. Um, we can now take any of these values and we can animate them over time. So let me actually just show you this process. So we got this guy here, move tool on for it. Uh, we're at the zero with frame and we'll go here and we'll set this guy. So basically this turns on automatic editing mode. So any moves, any changes I make will automatically create keyframes for it. So you see right here, vertices at zero, zero. We're just starting out, nothing really there. Um, so we're gonna move forward a few frames, say frame five. To everything and then we'll move it down just a little bit like so now you'll notice I'm using the vertices to move I can also move everything using this uh, little control port over here whichever one you prefer but you'll notice when I dropped it it automatically created this little bar right here well that is the keyframes that were set for that particular frame so now I'm gonna jump forward a little bit more and we'll move it down just a little bit more and then we'll jump forward a couple more frames and we'll move it down just a little bit more, like so. And now what I might want to do is some squash. Uh, so I'll grab that guy, for example. Oops, not what I want. Grab the center point for it. I'll bring him in. So this is my splat on animation. Um, or I could have used the scale tool to do to have basically done the same thing with a lot less distortion to our overall shape. But and now I'm just gonna move up to 15 and we'll go to here. And then we'll move up to 25. We'll speed this guy up a bit. And then we'll go to 30 and we'll go all the way up there. All right, so now if I go back here, Play is really strange in here because I don't really understand why it's so choppy or awful, but you can actually hop between keyframes. So I'll go back to the very first keyframe there, and then we can just literally go frame by frame using this guy. I don't, I don't. Again, I don't know why the play is so awful, but then you see basically the animation process across time. Now, if you've ever worked in animation in 3D world, this is all going to be very immediately familiar to you, but you'll notice all these other properties are actually animatable as well. So for example, if I wanted to start this guy off at uh, blue, right? I could actually then go to my last keyframe. That should jump to keyframe. You know, I'll just advance forward in the timeline and change that out to purple. All right. So now when we actually jump through keyframes, it will also interpolate the color across the entire frames of animation as well. So you're seeing one of the most gross basic examples of animation across this process, but you do get a pretty good idea of how it goes. You can also bring in uh, various different assets as you wish. So I could bring in, you know, uh, here I'll actually show you what you can bring in. Um, sync fig files, images, image sequences, audio files in um, various different formats, as well as lip sync files. You'll notice there's also the audio options at the top. Pretty basic, but if you have a soundtrack, 
or you're trying to do uh, lip syncing, so you're trying to sync up the, the words a character is speaking, uh, you can have an audio track playing as your animation goes. And then once you're done and you're happy with what you've created, like my masterpiece right here, uh, you're going up here and you can then render it out. Now, one of the cool things is the rendering is actually separate from the front end process. So uh, it spins off a separate um, process that runs in the background and does the conversion for you. Uh, it's built on top of the FFmpeg libraries, I think, for the most part. So you get uh, broad library support. So you come in here and you can pick your various different outputs. And there's a couple of cool things going on here. If you're working in game development, you can actually output to a ping sprite sheet. So you can have all the frames of your animation go and basically form up a sprite sheet as you go. Um, you can output this to an animated GIF if you wish. Here, let's do that. Um, let's create my GIF. I'll drop this sucker on my desktop somewhere. All right. Uh, so we wanted to do over time, 24 frames per second, start at zero, end at 32, sure, 33 frames per second, we'll set that down to 12, uh, equality and anti-aliasing seconds, and you can just go ahead and press render, and you'll see it says here in the background, it's rendering in the background, it is now done, because obviously that was the simplest animation you've ever seen in your life, and here is the generated file, I think... There you go. Go away. So there. Shut up, Microsoft. There is the animation we just created. Again, not the most impressive thing you've ever seen in your life, but you know we, we did it in a matter of seconds, which is pretty cool. But it does give you an idea of exactly uh, what Synfig or Synfig. I really should figure out what it's called. Uh, what it is capable of on a general level. Uh, at the same time, we could have also done a quick old preview. So come down here. You've got a preview mode. Uh, so you can basically do the same thing, set time begin, set time end, 32, do a preview, and it gives you pretty much an instant preview of what your animation looks like. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the basics of it. Uh, keyframe settings over here. Again, you can keyframe anything over time. All these different values and properties are available to be keyframed. Um, do uh, special effects on top. You can set the aliasing amount, the blending style. Uh, you see over here, you've got your palette editor. Uh, yeah, nothing really special going on there. Uh, you can, I believe this allows you to roll back your history. Uh, so if you don't want to have done something, you can actually uh, go back in time. And we saw our, um, our layer editing down here. You got advanced effects and options available there. Another thing you'll notice if you come up here, so here's all your various drawing and editing tools. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. But what you'll find, there's also plugins for uh, skeletal animation. Uh, but you can also switch out your workspaces. So in this case, I've been using the default workspace. And now I've noticed a glitch here, and I don't know if this is just me, but here, look at my tools right here, with my tool settings at the top. But what you can do is you can switch out your workspace. So if you're doing compositing, you know, so you're working on bringing all the scenes together, you can go into a compositing mode, lays out this way. And we can switch out now into animating mode. So if you're actually setting up over time, you know, for advanced, just look at your keyframes and all that detail, if that's what you need access to, you can switch into this mode, or we can switch back to default. But I lose my tool shelf. Oh, there it is. All right. For some reason, the tool shelf gets all completely minimized, but that's about it. Uh, so again, I am a bumbling idiot when it comes to the software. I showed you the very, very, very basics of creating an animation. There's a whole lot more on top. Things like we could have come in here and shown onion skinning so you can see the difference between frames. Um, I'm probably using the tool somewhat inadequately in certain areas, but you do have an idea of exactly what uh, it does bring to the table. And if you're looking at, you know, creating um, vector or bitmap based animations over time and you want a tool that does the interpolation between you know different sets of frames um synfig definitely is one to consider checking out especially again you do have that uh multitude of um, export options available to you that is definitely pretty cool and you've got some pretty good options for bringing different assets in here and working with um so yeah uh, that is um Synfig Studio or Synfig Studio, a GPL-based open source 2D animation package. Um, you know, it's obviously going to only appeal to the 2D animators among you, but uh, considering that it is a completely free tool that could be added to your arsenal, it's definitely one to be aware of. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.